Hello, and welcome to another installment of the Kentucky 4-H Virtual Learning Experiences. My name is Chuck Stamper, and I am an Extension Specialist with the Kentucky 4-H Youth Development Department. We have been so pleased to be able to offer these virtual learning experiences the past nine months. The past month in November, we've really been focusing on civic engagement and service. And that's what this session is going to focus on. What really is service? Is service something you get paid for? Is something that you offer to other people? Why do people do service projects? That's what we want to talk about and also discuss some ideas that you can do even in this time of uncertainty during the pandemic that we're going through now. First of all, let's relate this to the Kentucky 4-H program. The Kentucky 4-H program believes in working with other people. One of our um, premier experiences in the Kentucky 4-H Youth Development Program is our annual 4-H Youth Development Issues Conference, the 4-H Issues Conference. This past year was our 31st conference. We are very pleased that we were able to continue to offer the conference even during the pandemic, even though we had to make our last session completely virtual. But how awesome was it to see all of the wonderful projects and that the, the delegates had worked so hard together to make sure that they got presented. So what is service? Well, if we think about the Kentucky 4-H Youth Development Program, even the term 4-H makes us think about service. For, in for instance, our head, our heart, our hands, and our health. So if we look at each of those as a part of a well-rounded citizen, then that will give us a good way to start thinking about how important service is. There are two main types of service. We have community service, and then we have service learning. Community service are those types of activities that you just do to help someone, to help your community, to help an individual. Uh, it may be to uh, cut grass for a neighbor who is ill and shut in and can't cut gr their grass uh, for themselves. It might be that you see a bunch of litter uh, beside the, your, your roadway uh, and you don't want it to stay there. So you go out and uh, using uh, safety measures and you clean the, 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 the litter up and put it in bags so that the, the uh, garbage collectors can pick it up. It might be spending time with a, a family member who needs a little extra time. Maybe a young person needs red to once in a while. And, and you do it because you just want to help and you see a need and you feel the need. There are all, all certain types of community service that are important and are necessary. The other type is service learning. Now service learning is a little bit different than community service. You know, community service, you, you, you just basically, you go out and do it. And it means a whole lot to you, the person who is doing it, and the, the, the receiver, the group, or the individual that you're doing it for. Service learning is a little bit different. I want to give you a, um, a long technical definition first, and then I want to explain it to you. So according to Vanderbilt University, who um, hosts the uh, George Lucas Educational Foundation um, block grant for service learning, uh, they define service learning as a form of experiential education where learning occurs through a cycle of action and reflection as young people seek to achieve real objectives for the community and deeper understanding and skills for themselves. 
That is an excellent technical definition. So what does that really what does that mean in common terms? Well, what that means is service learning is a, an act of service where you think about it, do it, and reflect upon it after it's done. All right. So let's let's break that down. First of all, for, to be a service project, uh, a service learning project, it's really important for you to know the reason or issue that you're going to be working on. So, so um, you know, you have to research uh, your community. You have to talk to people. You have to look online, you know, find out why it's an issue. And then you have to develop your plan of action. And, and you have to develop, you know, who's the team that you're going to be working with? Who are your partners? Uh, and, and, you know, how are you going to go about doing this service learning project? And then after you do it, then it, it's really important for you to bring uh, folks who helped with it and, and bring the folks around the table to see what effects that uh, the service project had. So that ties a lot to, uh, that ties specifically in to what we teach in the 4-H Youth Development Program because we believe in experiential education as well as uh, we also uh, believe in positive youth development. And positive youth development is where we look at the assets that a young person has in his or her life. And, and, and we want to take those assets, those positive things, and we want to build upon them in a safe, caring, nurturing environment. And so that's why that community service and service learning fit so perfectly in our, um, in our Kentucky 4-H Youth Development Program. So, um, you know, we, we know that community service has been around for, for many years, um, but we saw back in the 90s that, that people needed more. They needed to understand why that we did community service. And that did not lessen the importance of community service, and it still doesn't. But what we wanted to do is we wanted to make our young people that were involved in, in service, we wanted to make them to be decision makers. We wanted them to be able to think about the why behind it and the how behind it and the effects of the service that they do. And so it, it's just really important for us to keep that in mind. So what are some ideas about service learning? What could we do? So here are some that, that have been uh, done in Kentucky for, for, for many years. Uh, there have been 4-H uh, groups that have worked uh, with Habitat for Humanity, and they've gone out and they've worked uh, at the prep site or actually building the homes or helping build the homes. Uh, we've had a lot of groups that helped um, bring in supplies and pack up food bags for the homeless or less fortunate. Uh, we've had a lot of 4-H groups, even our state teen council um, uh, adopted highways. And uh, I can remember seeing the sign on the way to our 4-H leadership center. And I was always so proud of that sign that said, this uh, road was adopted by the Kentucky 4-H state teen council. And then every year, the state teen council members would go and work together and clean up and pick up any debris or litter that was on that stretch of roadway. Another thing that I've noticed that, that um, 4-H groups, individual families or, or clubs, um, have gone out and cleaned up local parks, recreation sites, school buildings, school areas, 4-H uh, common areas, and so uh, it, it, you know, there are different ideas uh, that you can do uh, as a 4-H group or as a family. Another thing that I've really been pleased with is that a lot of our 4-H um, groups have also done uh, Christmas cards for the troops uh, or Valentine's cards for the troops or even set up pen pal, um, pen pal 
uh, system so that they can uh, send uh, words of encouragement to to um, elderly folks in their in their communities or shut-ins in their communities so that they never feel totally alone and that's so that's so important so you know a lot of these ideas that have been done in the Kentucky 4-H program you know you can see the breadth of the size so we've got little small things things that happen inside things that have an outside things that that take a short amount of time, things that that uh, require uh, multiple uh, attempts. So, what are the the what we want to make sure is that you understand the importance of doing service, and 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 why you know the why that you get out of it. So what do we do when we plan a project? So there are some steps I've already told you about that. First, you need to get your your planning group together. Are you going to do it as a family? You're going to do it as a 4-H uh, club? Are you going to do it as a teen club? So how are you going to do that? So, you know, it's really important that you have a youth and adult partnership and, and bring some people around the table to chat about it. When you have that group around the table and you start thinking about it, now's the time that you start researching. You know, talk to people in the community. Uh, look up uh, information on the web. Talk to community leaders. Talk to your school leaders. Talk to your faith-based leaders. You know, what are the issues in the community that need addressing and are those able be, to be done by your group that's interested? Then after you do that research, then it's important to get your plan of action. You know, who is going to do what? What are you going to be able to do? Who, when is it going to be done? You know, those are very important for you to do. It's very important to make an action plan and, and stick with that and make sure that everyone is on the same page when you're doing that action plan. And then you do your, your service project. And, and, and hopefully it, it uh, goes without too many uh, hiccups. And, uh, um, and then after you're done, then you come back together with that, that same planning group and you talk about the reflection. What really happened? How would you change it for the future? And what will be the long-term effects for what you've done? And when you do that, you'll be able to hear different perspectives from the people that were involved. What was your perspective as a planner? What were people, uh, you know, their their perspective as uh, assistants or workers? And, and those people from the community, what were their perspective? You know, 4-H members have been proud of their communities that they've lived in. Uh, we call our communities home. And, and it doesn't matter if we live in a rural community or an urban uh, uh, urban community. I mean, 4-Hers want to make their commuter communities better. And that's why that we, we focus a lot on the concept of service. So we are very pleased that in 2017 that we were part of the National 4-H programs, true leaders in service um, uh, program. So, and what that program is, it's a dedicated month of service projects that culminate in the last Saturday of April into a community or countywide, um, you know, just a huge service project. Now, some people do that uh, throughout the month of April and culminate with the day of service. But a lot of 4-H groups spread it out over the year. And, and that's why that's very important for you to do. You know, you don't have to just do service one month out of the year. Um, you know, a lot of people think that in, in the month of November, because we have the Thanksgiving holiday, um, and then follow that up with, uh, with Christmas and, and uh, New Year's, that those are wonderful times for families and friends to get together and, and, and create wonderful service projects for other people. But we don't want you to limit that. We want you to do it when it's best and safest for you. 
Another reason that you can work on Service Project is it gives you the opportunity to meet with people and to network with people so that you can learn and become stronger in your communication and leadership and your civic engagement. So I would suggest that you, you know, talk with your 4-H leaders, talk with your um, 4-H agent, talk with your county commissioners or magistrates, um, you know, talk with uh, folks in community clubs like uh, Master Gardeners, Kiwanis, Lions Clubs, um, Homemakers Clubs, um, talk to your local education associations, maybe your chambers of commerce. Uh, what about the people who run after school programs or homeless shelters? Uh, don't forget your faith based uh, communities as well, uh, because a lot of them are are really service oriented. So those are the, the types of organizations that you want to bring to the table to collaborate to begin your planning process. I know that I've said this a couple of times, but I want to make sure that, that we reiterate it. We understand that we're in a time that we have never been in before. Uh, COVID-19 has created a pandemic that has lasted now for nine months in the United States. We want you to be safe more than anything. So we want you to make sure that you stay within uh, the protocols and guidelines for a safe and healthy experience. Our first priority is your safety. We want you to grow as families. We want you to grow as 4-Hers, but we want you around to grow and, and we want you to be safe. So make sure that when you're planning these, that you take into consideration uh, safety and protocol guidelines. But I want you also to remember this, that just because we are in a pandemic, there are still ways that you can uh, do service projects, community service or service learning. So, uh, you know, I want you to talk it over with your families, with your 4-H agent, 4-H leaders, and see what you can do to make a difference in your community. That's what the family activity that I have uh, prepared for you is for you to do. So I printed this 4-H clover because um, I love 4-H, of course, and, and I listed the, the four, what the 4-Hs stand for, head, heart, hands, and health. So this is an awesome way for you and your family to brainstorm ideas that you could do some service in your community. You know, uh, so, so if you think about each of these and what, what personality uh, perspective or, or skill perspective that, that it affects. So, so if I was thinking with my head and, you know, I was thinking about uh, what type of well, community service or service learning projects I could do. You know, what, what uh, projects or service that I could do um, out of gratitude or thankfulness. You know, how, what can I do with my hands to show service and to show service for others? And what type of activities and service could I do that could better the health of my community or my county or my state or my family. So, you know, that's a good way to begin. And so jot down some ideas, brainstorm uh, some ideas with your family and your 4-H agent and, and then go from there. We want you to be safe, happy and healthy during this time. We also want you to remember the, how important it is to uh, be engaged uh, in uh, your, your communities because civic engagement is very important. Please be safe. Have a wonderful, wonderful uh, month. And we hope to see you again on some future virtual learning experiences. So go out there, create some wonderful things and present some wonderful service projects so that we could see them and talk about them later.